Are you ready, Robin? We're good. Yes, okay. we are. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Roxanne, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Davis? Here. Mr. Dombrowski? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Ingalls? Here. Okay. Mr. Marshall? Here. Mrs. McGratton? Mr. Ryan? Here. Mr. Sam? Here. Mr. Washington? Seven here, two absent. Thank you. Uh, at this time, are there, um, well, we don't have a presentation. We have actually a uh, commission report. So uh, Mr. Lynch, would you take it away? Sure. Um, do you want me to I share my screen to show what I have as a bunch of slides? I'm not sure if the slides were available. You can or I can share for you. I have them ready. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so a presentation was made uh, by Weston Sampson, uh, the, the engineering firm that um, was reviewing the design concept for a low pressure sewer line from Ledyard Center uh, eventually to our waste treatment facility. Um, the there were three phases. So what you're looking at here is uh, the multi-use uh, path. We would uh, bury the, weight, the three inch uh, low pressure line underneath the path um, go to the next slide. So we have the proposed sewer extension from the high school. As you know, there's already a sewer line going from the high school to Pennyways. Uh, it's pumped. That's also a low pressure line. Uh, and you can see Route 117, Fairway Drive, Colonel Legend Highway. Uh, we, can, we can skip the next slide. They did a test in the high school pump station. Uh, and we'll go to this next slide with the treatment plant capacity. So this is significant. Um, the plant capacity is 260,000 gallons per day. However, if you notice, uh, we have the, 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 we have potentially over 100,000 gallons per day um, that we can use um, if we can limit the infiltration inflow. So you look in the dry, the dry weather flow rate is, is about half of the of the capacity um so if we go to the next slide the treatment plant capacity then has three we have an immediate treatment plant capacity of fifty four thousand gallons per day we have a realistic amount of one hundred four thousand, and then the ultimate optimist uh when we get uh rid of the uh, infiltration into the older system of one hundred fifty four thousand gallons per day so uh, the next slide shows there's three phases. There's an initial phase that's under the pathway. There is a center phase, which is the developers. The town would not be responsible for that development. And then there's a final phase where the town would replace the three inch line that goes from the high school to Pennyway, Pennywise, um, which we consider a potential um, bottleneck in the in the remote future um and then there's a future build out to extend uh west of route 117. now the next slide shows uh a a rendition of the same map and it has the phases the initial phase final and then the center phase and then the future the future build out so let's get down to the, the next slide will show that the initial phase is estimated to cost about 1.2 million. Uh, the center phase is to be, is really uh, to be determined by the private developers. And the final phase of increasing that line, it would be $950,000. And then there's a future build out again, that would be uh, taken on by the private developers. Uh, we The next slide shows kind of an aerial view uh, where the initial phase red, the red line is going to the library. Um, and then there's the developer, the yellow 
lines showing the uh, developer phase. Now, um, engineers like to talk about, uh, the next slide shows that uh, we're talking about EDUs. And an EDU is a single family home. So the center phase could handle uh, up to 500 EDUs. This is what a single family would, uh, on the average, dispose waste disposal. Um, if we look at some scenarios, go to the next slide. I want to point out in the next slide that there we look at different areas. So D is happens to be where the um, police station and town hall are. A is across the street. B is is uh, on the backside of Ledger. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Ledger Center School or the now the uh, development area. And you can see where E is on the other side of 117. C happens to be where I believe the Habitat for Humanity is going to be set up. If you look at some of the numbers, we and and we had looked at some what the what some future past developers were looking at, you'll see the e, the EDUs that uh, we estimated. So the next slide comes down to the actual total gallons per day. So if you notice, if we were to go with some of the intention of the development, we would exceed the our capacity of our plant. So we're looking at 216,000 gallons per day. So the, the center phase would be 98,000, and then the future buildout would be 118,000. So we could handle the, the center phase, but then if you went into the future, we would, we would have um, some issues. So the next slide just emphasizes that. So we have a center phase estimate of 88,000, where we're looking at 54,000, and then the ultimate would be a, a 216 instead of 154. So we, what engineers do is, well, let's do a reduce the development scenarios by 50%. And when we say that, we're not talking about commercial development. We're really talking about apartment houses. Um, and so if we look at the center phase, about 250 EDUs and the future build out 500, and we go to the next slide, we see that we, we, we assume certain 175 residential, two bedroom, 90, one bedroom and A, and all the way down the, the, the lots that uh, would be future developed, that's reduced by 50%. Then you'd see the next slide that the numbers uh, come out to a doable set of numbers, 110,000 gallon per day. So, um, and then the next slide just simply puts a, a final number to that. Now there is a, there is, we're very close to the realistic max treatment facility of 110,000 versus 104. So we, we could actually go to the, the future build out uh, less some, some development. So up to now, before I go to the next slide, are there, are there any questions? I'm sure I've, I've run through this really fast, but I just wanted to give you an overview. Um, any, anybody have any questions? Uh, this is Kevin Nebrowski. Question on, so you say a 50% reduction in the build-out. Does that 50% reduction in build-out align with what the developer who owns the Ledger Center School? Because right now you say Ledger Center School, nothing. But Correct. we know that there's some plan that they want to put some um, apartment buildings on the back of that parcel. Correct. And um, some other uh, further down as well. But I don't know if that line, though the numbers of what they had initially proposed, not not you know, um, in renditions only, would that line with the uh, fifty percent reduction number? Do we know that? That's that's the question. We we don't know that, and the numbers that we had seen, some of this some of this development uh, proposals are old. So I can't, I don't know what the present thinking is right now. Okay. So you're right. We, we, uh, planning and zoning is working with them and we're trying to get our arms around, but we're, again, we're showing what our capacity is and what they can, what they can develop on. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a, you brought up a good question. So this plan does not, it assumes, for example, <laughs> the town, uh, 
you know, the, the town, how, the, how, the housing that, the, I mean, the buildings that the town is occupying today with the police station spent a lot of money on a septic system, very advanced septic system. We, we don't plan on replacing that. We're not, you know, we're not, and that's the, that's the thinking right now. If you've got adequate um, treatment, we're, we're not, we're not advocating that you replace it. Now, I know that there's some people are having some difficulties and we would, you know, we would consider that, but the plan is really for future development, not, ex not existing um, systems. We, we, we don't plan on replacing them. Um, that can change, but that's, that's the thinking. And you're right. I don't have, we don't have um, present plans of the developers. I, I'm assuming we're going to get them soon. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other counselors have questions? Hearing none, um, go uh, ahead and continue. Yeah, just gonna, yeah, just gonna go ahead to the next one. So there's new there's new grant fund available. So I, I did show you. So if you know the recommendation is obviously we would put in the line underneath the trail, but I wouldn't uh I, I would actually go to the final phase too and upgrade the bottleneck because you know the funds are available. Uh, we get it all done and we don't have to worry about it in the future. But geez, uh, we got an opportunity here. Um, Fifty percent of that cost, so six hundred thousand dollars. Well, actually, about over a million dollars is actually eligible for funding from the state. This is not the money that the town has. Um, this is uh, this is funding for waste treatment um, facilities in community centers. So you have this community challenge. It's a one-to-one -one funding match. Uh, it allows ARPA to be the matching funds. Uh, we have to compete for this funding. We have to submit a grant, and there's a variety of projects to be funded. Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. And, and I, we put green check marks. So actually there should be a green check mark on the downtown major hub development that improves or, and reuse existing properties. Now you may not call that a brownfield, but I don't know. It's a, that's subject to interpretation that uh, the school would be, might be considered a brownfield. But um, this, and, and maybe there's some new housing to support affordability possibly, but at least we have some, uh, I think we would compete very favorably with this project to get funding. Um, and then you see the time scale for what, when the application has to be put in and, and finalized. Okay, I believe this is the last, the last slide is the next steps. We're in the, in the process of re-examining the development with the town planner. Obviously we wanna solicit public input. I'm sure the developers want to want to get their hands on this, uh, and then we'll submit a draft report to finalize. And then, of course, we're going to prepare for the community challenge, the initial and final phases. So we would be going after the you know approximately 2.1 million dollars, the 50 percent of that. Uh, we are right now in the initial. We're, we're right now in the design of the initial phase underneath the trail. And uh, we would add the final phase if the student, if the grant is awarded. So that's it. Sorry I went so fast, but uh, I know your time is lessons here, and I thought I'd just throw it on, throw it on the table, and then have you guys think about it. Um, that that's where that's where we're going. Any counselors have questions at this time? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. Um, thank you for your uh, presentation and also thank you for your long service. Um, WPCA is not necessarily a commission that's um, one that people gravitate to. So we really appreciate you and all the volunteers and um, Bill for um, being the liaison for so long. Uh, we do appreciate it and, and hope we'll um, be able to move through this, uh, this process. It's something that's We've been looking at, as you know, for a very, very long time. So thank you, Ed.
No, you're welcome. And I'm, I, you know, I think we're, I, I feel very positive about this. We're, we're going to go forward with it. I'm, I'm, we're really excited about, you know, helping the town out in this. So. Very good. Thank you. At this time, are there any residents and property owners that wish to speak? Hearing none, uh, comments of town councilors. Well, we're quiet tonight. Okay. And let's, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve uh, prior minutes. No. Second. Motions made and seconded to approve the regular meeting minutes of September 8th. Roxanne, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Thom? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. Mrs. Ingalls? Yes. Mr. Marsh, uh, Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Eight in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. Let's see, we have our communications and referrals on the, on the portal. I did not make any referrals since the last meeting. Let's move on to subcommittee reports. Uh, admin, Andra, Councilor Ingalls. Uh, admin has several reappointments uh, later on the agenda tonight. Thank you. Community relations. We have not met since the last council meeting. Thank you, Bill. Finance. Finance did meet last week uh, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. And the committee heard two presentations regarding requests from Southeast Connecticut Council of Governments, Executive Director James Butler and Ledge Light Health District Deputy Director Jen Mogio for a portion of the American Rescue Plan or ARPA funds received by the town to fund a regional recovery planner and ongoing efforts and needs of the health district. The SCOG request in four payments over four years is for 1% of the county funds the town received. And I'll skip through this because we're gonna talk about this more tonight. Um, the, L the Ledge Light request is for 1% of the total amount the town received. Um, and the committee asked a couple of questions. One, we asked how the planning function uh, at the SCOG level would be paid for after four years. And it would, the answer was it won't be funded. So it's a temporary position. Um, and we also asked for a list of purposes and costs that the health district uh, request would cover and they have since provided that. Um, also uh, on ARPA news, Ledyard will be receiving a county allocation of 2.839 million and a municipal allocation of 1.487 million for a total of 4.327 million. Um, Finance Director Marsha Hancock reported that the auditors Clifton, Larson, Allen will be at town hall this week and next week. The Board of Ed was also invited to the meeting to discuss the process by which the board voted to purchase IT services for the coming year in advance in order to get a discount. Two questions were discussed. It was, uh, the first one was the board aware that the services were extended by prepaying using next year's budget funds? And was the prepayment accounted for in keeping with generally accepted accounting principles as the town's auditors expect? Uh, the group discussed for some time and agreed to continue the discussion after talking with the auditors about the process. Uh, the committee did not question the decision to prepay in order to receive a discount, only the process was followed and the accounting for it. And as an update, I met with the auditors this afternoon and also the finance director and the mayor and have uh, sent a message over to the Board of Ed about how the accounting should be done uh, as recommended by the auditors. Uh, the committee continued discussing the ARPA funding and the mayor presented a list of additional potential projects which the funds could be used for. And we agreed to continue that discussion and we, we will tonight. Um, and I'll skip through some more of this because I'm sure the mayor will have more as we get into the topic. Um, but the council has the option of including some or all of the needs in the capital plan. Uh, the needs are in the list that the mayor is keeping and I've added a few to it. Um, so we can put it all in the capital plan or we can compare, you know, capital plan 
versus emergency funding. And some things have to be done on a timeline. So we'll talk about that more tonight. Lastly, the council has a field walk on Wednesday, September 29th at 5 p.m., spending about 45 mm -hmm. minutes at each of the two fire stations in town, starting at Gales Ferry to learn more about the town's fleet of emergency apparatus and upcoming replacement needs. All counselors are invited. It is a public meeting, so anyone is welcome to attend. Um, it's very interesting and also rewarding to see uh, what our fire companies do. We have only one item on the agenda for tonight along with the discussion of ARPA funds, and that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for finance? Okay, moving on to, oh, did you have a question? No. Moving on to land use. Uh, land use hasn't met, I have no report. Okay. Other liaison reports. Uh, Councilor Engels. The Board of Education held its regular meeting on Wednesday, September 15th. The district is experiencing a bus driver shortage in fact, the entire state is facing a shortage. Uh, if there is a concern regarding a specific bus stop, there is a safety form that can be filled out on the ledger.net website to report the issue. Um, they continue to wrestle with facility issues, including mold and mildew. I don't know if Councillor Marshall is gonna be reporting on this, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna limit this. Um, Mold and mildew in both the LMS gym and auditorium, a specialist was brought in to identify the cause of the mold and mildew. The auditorium has been remediated, but the gym is currently shut down. Air quality tests will be performed. And beyond his normal scope of duties, Mr. Donaldson continues to work with contractors to get issues resolved. Uh, finally, the board voted unanimously to replace the AC in the high school cafeteria. It has been repaired in the past with used parts, but is now at the end of its life. The board also voted to repair the PA system at the high school and to install a heating oil transfer pump for the AgriSci boilers. The installation of the fuel oil pump will come to the council finance committee to approve the use of OSTI funds. And that is my report. Any questions for board of ed? Uh, I see online, or in chatter about the bus driver situation in different towns in the area certainly is a huge problem. And I, I will say I see far less coming from Ledger than just about anywhere. So I'm not sure how we have been so fortunate, but Groton, it just seems to be unending. Uh, they've had really severe problems. So um, any, let's see, any other liaison reports, uh, Kevin? Um, um, uh, last evening, the Agricultural Commission met. Um, uh, they continued a discussion of what uh, additional responsibilities and roles that they were willing to take, and they've asked uh, land use to kind of hold off on moving forward with the amendment changes to the the ordinance because they want to they want to have a little bit further discussion amongst themselves before we act on it. So mm -hmm. that's my report. Thank you. Any other liaison reports? Uh, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Um, just dovetailing into the, the bus driver situation, you probably also saw uh, up in Massachusetts, they actually utilized uh, a National Guard to start driving school buses due to the lack. And that's just, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking that they are in such a bind. So not just, not just Ledger, not just Eastern Connecticut, but um, probably the Northeast as a whole, if not the country. So um, just a quick update on COVID. We've had a number of cases. Um, however, we're, you know, we had 39 prior to uh, this week. So school is starting to ramp up and cases are ramping up in the schools. Um, there are only 28 hospitalizations in New London County, which is, which is actually a good thing. Uh, we had peaked at 102 on January 12th. So we're down pretty good. And, and I received a, a report from Department of Public Health uh, Thursday that uh, said out of the 2.3 million people in Connecticut that have been fully vaccinated, less than one half of 1% of those have contracted COVID. So if that number holds true, that's a very positive thing. Um, Vaccination-wise, it's still climbing very slowly. The 65 plus, they're 100% done. 
the 45 to 64 are at 66 percent the 25 to 44 are at 62 percent the 18 to 24 year olds are at 60 percent and our 12 to 17 are at 55 so um, in southeastern connecticut as a whole um, ledger is still right up there in the top three towns of uh, overall vaccinations I uh, had an interesting meeting with the, the United States Navy uh, yesterday with um, our Director of Public Works. Uh, they have reached out to uh, municipalities because they are looking to uh, form relationships with adjacent towns to see if they can provide us services or purchasing power and we could do the same for them uh, on a fee-based schedule. So. Um, you know, we, we were slightly skeptical, but we wanted to listen. And um, there are some opportunities there that don't require labor in particular, because that's something that uh, we also struggle with. We have nine job postings uh, in town hall, and, and a couple of them have been posted since the 1st of June. So, uh, but the opportunities, some of the opportunities are very simple. It's a matter of, of essentially allowing the U.S. Navy to piggyback onto an existing contract price that we would have, and then we are afforded a profit margin on that to allow them to piggyback. So, interesting meeting. I'll keep you updated as that progresses. We're going to have another discussion on that. Uh, I also attended the SASHA board meeting, which I'm a member of. That's the Southeastern Connecticut Housing Alliance. We have been uh, working on affordable housing plans throughout Southeastern Connecticut. Uh, Ledger is due for one. As you recall, you approved a, a grant for $15,000, which we were awarded. So uh, planning and zoning is now actively working towards getting that uh, affordable housing uh, plan ready and needs to be submitted by the end of June of 2022. Um, I appointed Gary McKeon to the Eastern Regional Tourism District. He uh, was, he's an independent, um, registered independent voter and uh, he replaced Carol Christensen, who I thank for her service there. Carol has been elected uh, the president of the Connecticut Association of Realtors. So her plate I think is very full. So uh, Gary stepped up and, and two days later, he, he attended his first uh, tourism district meeting. So I thank him for that already. Uh, we had a Demis uh, COVID call, COVID meeting. Um, things seem to be improving pretty well um, in terms of uh, town's uh, resilience and, and continuing efforts to operate, which is a very good thing. Uh, they're only meeting now once a month. So they've kind of dialed that back a bit. Uh, I would also thank uh, Councillor Evans, Councillor Ingalls, and Councillor Soms for attending the Advanced CT EDC workshop. Um, I felt like it was a little light on, on uh, data and on substance, but I was happy that we were able to have the, the workshop anyway in person. There were 22 attendees, and um, we got some interesting information out of it, and hopefully... Uh, what we can do is get our land use uh, commissions and boards to work together to uh, try to advance some projects as projects start coming up uh, for, for approvals. And then the last thing was, and Councillor Soms had, had mentioned this too, um, the auditors are in town this week and next week, so I met with them today and I'm going to be meeting with them again next week uh, as we move forward with the audit. And um, I think things look pretty good on the general government side. And then the last thing I would add is that uh, I made you all aware that uh, Marcia Hancock is retiring in January. So we have retained uh, Linda Savitsky, who is a retired uh, OPM and Groton, uh, Town of Groton Finance Director to assist us with the search for the, finance, the next finance director. Um, we're not going to be hiring from within, so it's, it is a position that we're going to be looking outside of our organization to fill, and, uh, it's, and it's a big, Marsha is small in stature, but has very large shoes to fill, so we need to make sure we get this right and get the right person uh, into that role, so I'm looking forward to working with uh, Linda and several other people to start to uh, find the right person. 
And the rest of it, uh, uh, the ARPA discussion, I will save that for uh, when we have that in our workshop. There we Linda, go. I think Linda Savisky found Marsha for us. She, um, she she's, been, she's been around a very long time. Yes, she has. And she uh, she was slightly reluctant with Marsha because Marsha didn't have a municipal governmental background. She came from the nonprofit sector. But uh, Linda, Linda has known Marsha long enough that Linda said, I wouldn't hesitate to look for somebody from the nonprofit sector again, because, uh, you know, Marsha is very bright and she, she picked up on the governmental aspect very quickly. Thank you. Any questions for the mayor? Um, Councilor Psalms. Just a comment. Um, I, I really dread this day coming when Marsha leaves. She's been wonderful to work with. She's done a fantastic job. She's she's just been great. So I'm going to miss her. We all are. Mm -hmm. Second that. OK. There are no other questions for the mayor. Uh, let's move on to admin. Okay. Wait, I am, okay. I'm not, I'm not muted. Good night. Okay. All right. So I make a motion to reappoint the following members to the Inland Wetland and Water Courses Commission for a two-year term ending October 31st, 2023. Mr. Paul Mogul, R 827 Colonel Ledyard Highway. Uh, Ledyard regular member, Mr. Justin DeBroat, D five Aaron's Way, Ledyard regular member and Mr. J.A. Capon, D37 Silas Dean Road, Ledyard alternate member. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. And these are just uh, reappointments. So um, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. Mrs. Ingalls? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sam? Yes. Eight in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I make a motion to reappoint Mr. Marcel Wood, D11 South Glenwoods Road, Gales Ferry, to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a three year term ending October 31st, 2024. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Roxy, would you call the roll? Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Soms? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Eight in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Uh, finance has an item next. This is Councillor Solms. I move to approve two tax refunds in the combined total amount of $5,749.40 with each exceeding $2,400 in accordance with tax collector departmental procedures. Second, Councillor Ryan. So as is our normal practice, um, the mayor normally approves um, tax refunds. They are almost always a double payment where uh, the escrow company has made a payment, the landowner has made a payment, and one of them has to be returned. Um, but when they exceed $2,400, it has to go to the, to the town council. So the first one, uh, the Warmath Parcheski, uh, is a, uh, an accounting error by CoreLogic, the escrow company, um, they just failed to post correctly and they accidentally paid twice. The second one is the more classic case where the escrow company and the landowner, the homeowner paid the tax and one needs a refund. All are in, in uh, good order and uh, we recommend approving both. Any further discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. Evans? Yes. Mrs. Ingalls? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sam? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Seven, seven in favor, zero opposed. 
<laughs> motion carries. Uh, the next item, um, which we're calling a work session, um, I asked to put on the agenda because I wanted to make sure that those that aren't part of the finance committee have the opportunity to follow and understand this. There will be a lot of discussion about this over the next several months and, um, and even years, I guess. Um, and I thought that it would be helpful that we have a discussion on this tonight in that our agenda was so short. Um, otherwise we were gonna have a half an hour meeting, um, which is okay, but this was a very good opportunity to um, discuss this important issue. So I have asked Bill, since he's chair of finance, to, um, to take it away. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Davis. And I'm gonna ask the mayor uh, to help me with some of these so uh, we can take turns as, as the case may be. So the first three that you see on, on the screen that Roxanne is sharing, and for those who uh, may have called in, I don't know if we have any, but um, there's a sewer line extension from Ledyard Center to Ledyard High School. Uh, that's phase one of the presentation that uh, Mr. Lynch made. And that's the sewer line that runs um, beneath the planned multimodal trail between the high school and uh, Ledyard Center. So that's 1.2 million. Uh, and there is a possible, as Mr. Lynch mentioned, there's a possible 50% uh, match through DECD. Uh, the second part <clears throat> is also the sewer line. It's for $612,500. And that's to go from 214, 117 to Colonel Ledyard 117. Um, and then the third one is the final phase, which is from Ledyard High School to Pennywise. And as you'll recall, the mayor mentioned a, uh, a bottleneck. The three inch line can handle some additional sewage from Ledyard Center, but it can't hold it all. So uh, the third phase is to increase that line, dig it up and replace it with a six, six inch uh, instead of a three inch line. So that's $950,000. So this is something we've been working on for at least 15 years that I know of and, and probably decades before that. It's to bring sewer to Ledyard Center to do two things. One, increase economic development and provide opportunity for more retail growth and also provide more um, high density housing uh, with people who are potentially walkabout customers who can um, visit and patronize the local businesses in Ledyard Center. Um, then in no particular order, uh, we wanted to, and I say we want to, these are all ideas at this point, um, ClearGov, which is the new platform that we use this year to present the budget to the public has additional modules, which would increase transparency, make it easier to see the budget even easier than it was to understand it this year, um, that's a cost of $42,000. Um, then there were the requests from uh, Southeastern Council of Governments, <clears throat> uh, one for a regional planner, and that's $28,399. And they were using or requesting uh, that we use the 1% of the county funds that we receive in ARPA funding. So in, in, in high round numbers, we're getting $4 million. 1% um, of the county share, which we also get because there are no counties in Connecticut, so that, that helped the towns, um, is $28,399, as I mentioned. And um, the state of Connecticut views SCOG as a uh, quasi county agency because they serve 22 towns. So this is in line with the, the state's view of, of county versus town. Um, it's in line with regionalization. Um, and as Mr. Ryan questioned when we first heard this, um, the, the position goes away after four years. Um, so that's SCOG. Then uh, the Southeast Cultural Coalition is requesting the same amount, 1% of the county funds. And this is for arts and cu culture recovery aid. And Mayor, help me. I think I heard that there was a condition with this that the money would come right back to the town. Am I right in that? 
Uh, yes. So, so what the uh, what the southeastern Connecticut or southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition had said was that the funds they would basically be the intermediary to distribute the funds for arts and culture within the town of Ledger. So the twenty eight three ninety nine that that we would uh, if if we were to approve it, uh, that's something that they would handle and distribute right back into our own community. Okay. So this is just, well, I'll, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll come up with my opinions later. I have plenty of them. Um, TVCCA, uh, which is Thames Valley Community something or other, um, they provide social services to um, New London County. Um, and they are also requesting $15,000 for senior needs uh, with surface service upgrades for their commissary. I'm not aware of where their commissary is. Can, can you fill us in on that, Mayor? Uh, they are up in Basra on Stockhouse Road. Uh, okay. They have an office in Norway, and um, they they do they do incredible things. I mean, they they uh, we rely on them heavily with uh, social services. Uh, they are the ones that handle the uh, the heating assistance, the energy assistance programs uh, throughout the year. Uh, they've done incredible work but yeah that's where they're located up on stockhouse road in basra is their commissary thank you mm -hmm. and then uh <clears throat> back to some of the town's um ideas uh solar solar charging station uh placed on the upper town green uh cost is relatively low it's twelve thousand dollars and it will provide solar usb charging which may not sound all that important but if there's a major uh, widespread outage in electrical service that can come in very handy uh, for people who have no other means to recharge their phones and other devices. So we put them at Town Green, Bill Library, Gales Ferry, three locations, about $4,000 each. <clears throat> I should also mention um, during the, the finance discussion, we said we would compare these requests to our, our present capital plan and identify what is a capital need versus what is an emergency need. And uh, so you'll see in one column that uh, this comes under public need and public safety. Um, also install Wi-Fi in the food pantry. That's a very low request, $2,500, again, coming under public need and public safety. Um, and it could also uh, reach up to the town green, uh, the upper town green and the upper pavilion, the Holdridge Pavilion. Uh, to provide Wi-Fi for folks up there. Um, and Wi-Fi is a, a part of our lives today. It also, uh, it, it's a big deal for the farmer's market. I'm not sure if it would cover the farmer's market or how that would work, but all of the merchants at the farmer's market like to have Wi-Fi. Um, Councillor Davis, can you comment on that, what they do today? You're mute. Which one did you want me to comment on? Uh, the Wi-Fi in the, in the food pantry. Would that help the farmer's market? Or do they have their own Wi-Fi somehow? Oh, no, we do not have Wi-Fi. So that would cover that whole area. OK, yep. so that would be huge for the farmer's market. Right. OK, next one. Thank you. Next one is the solar power crosswalk sign for Ledger Center at $7,500, again, coming under public safety. Um, so these would be crosswalk flashing lights powered by solar. Um, and if you've ever seen their, these, their LED lights, um, sometimes they put them in the, in the pavement. And I don't think that's such a great idea, but um, the signs themselves have flashing lights and they're pretty hard to miss. If you're driving down Route 117 or any road and somebody pushes one of those buttons and you see these LED lights flashing, it makes it pretty clear there's somebody in the crosswalk. Uh, so again, um, that's under public safety. Next one is Sandy Hollow guardrails, uh, much larger dollar amount, $225,000 public safety. This has been in our capital plan for years. Um, we haven't done it. We want to replace uh, the decaying posts with steel ribbon guardrails. Uh, the reason is to keep vehicles out of the reservoir and also keep them on the roadway. Uh, the mayor provided some figures, I think it was in the last 10 years, we've actually had only one vehicle go in the reservoir. Uh, we've talked to Groton Utilities about whether they would be willing to cover this cost since it's their reservoir. 
uh, they've declined. Um, so there you have it, also public safety. Uh, next one, uh, another one, public safety and also ADA compliance, a concrete floor for the pole barn in the lower town green, $55,000 to pour a concrete floor. And I can tell you having, having recently negotiated that inside the, the uh, pole barn on crutches during the farmer's market, it's pretty tricky. Um, and, and even when you're walking, if you're unsure of your footing, and even if you're in perfectly good physical shape, you can still trip and lose your footing because the sun doesn't shine inside the pole barn. There aren't vehicles driving on those millings to compact them. So it's pretty loose and it's pretty tricky and, and the concrete floor would help us uh, avoid a potential hazard and, and lawsuit. Bill, if I could just add, sure. um, you know, the farmer's market had very, very few complaints, but the complaints we did have, and most of the people were pretty kind about it, but the complaints we did have had to do with that, um, with that floor. Um, the, you know, wheelchairs, strollers, but probably the biggest one was uh, people with walkers. Um, almost impossible to uh, get through there with a walker, very difficult. So um, I'm certainly very supportive of this particular one. As a recent victim, I am too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one, sidewalk backfill, Ledyard Center, $35,000. Uh, again, public safety, but also economic development. Um, and this is, this is misleading. We're not actually backfilling next to sidewalks. We're filling sidewalks in where none exists. So we would connect 650 linear feet of sidewalk uh, where sidewalks do not exist, which would make the town center far more walkable. Um, and I see people walking there all the time. Uh, town employees and, and employees from businesses walk, residents walk to and from the center. And the, the more walkable we can make Ledger Center, the better for all of us. So that's 35,000. Uh, then the town hall AC replacement, as the mayor mentioned, that's a $75,000 that's in the capital, or it is a capital need. I think I saw it in the capital budget. I, I did go through the SIP just before the meeting, but our current system as the mayor reported has died and we need to replace it. Um, next one, re, re vinyl side, the food pantry, um, 17,500. That's a early version of uh, vinyl siding that you see on that building. It's about 30 years old. It's faded and it's cracking and it's brittle. And the newer sidings uh, last far longer and would make that building look a lot better. We're gonna have to replace it at, one, at some point. Uh, so that is, if I didn't say it's 17,500. Then replace six doors in town hall, $23,000 capital needs again. Uh, they're mostly exterior doors on the east side, uh, and we would add an electronic locking system to them. Some of them are in very rough shape. I think we have some rust through, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor. Yeah, that's accurate. They are they are sheet metal construction, and the the winter snow and ice melt just destroys them. So the bottom six to twelve inches of these doors are are uh, rusted through. Thank you. And then uh, another one, add funds to the housing rehabilitation grant uh, with $100,000. This is a social service need. This is a really great program. Uh, it was originally seeded with money. I'm not sure if it was state or federal <laughs> money, but it was originally seeded and people can make uh, needed repairs to their homes if they apply. Originally, it started out as septic service, sep septic system repair and replacement. And it's since extended to other things like, you know, replacing decks and roofs and other things. And you have to meet some, some minimum qualifications for um, basically uh, financial need. But when you get the loan uh, to do the repairs, it's not due until you sell your house. So when a house is sold, the money gets back, it gets put back into the fund and then it can be loaned out again. But over the years, um, it's gotten tied up and, and you know, the little more time goes by, the more it gets tied up. So we were thinking of just giving it a booster shot of $100,000. Uh, we have a backlog of applications, so we could really use this money for social, social services. Last one is Parks and Rec Summer Scholarships. 
town-wide, it's only $10,000, and it's to fund low-income summer camp scholarships for social services in Parks and Rec. Total so far is 3,827,000, and the town is getting 4.1 million in total. Um, and looks like the mayor included a 10% contingency in that figure. So we're presently at 3.8 million. So I'll stop there and uh, turn it back to the mayor and uh, uh, Chairman Davis. I was just going to say that this, this list is just ideas. Um, if anybody has ideas, we certainly entertain them. Um, but for now, this is just ideas that um, mo mostly came from um, town hall. Um, I also uh, would add that we'll have to have a discussion on process, how we actually approve these items and um, how they fit in with budget approvals, et cetera. Um, that's for another day, but um, at this time, I'll see if the mayor has anything he'd like to add. Yeah, I'll just add a couple of things. I mean, the, the flexibility of that number, so the 4,327 that we have versus the 3,827,124 that shows on the screen here, the, the, the big variable here is that the potential for that uh, Connecticut DECD Communities Challenge Grant, uh, if we receive as much as a million dollars towards the sewer project, uh, that, will, that will free up a tremendous amount of ARPA funds. So I think, I think we need to be prepared to solicit additional ideas. Ideas can, can be added and they can be called off the list. Um, and, you know, as I said, we do have plenty of time we have until December 31st of 24 to identify our expense and then to fully expend by December 31st of 26. So we do have time. Just wanted to add one thing regarding the housing rehab grants. So we have 17 people on the waiting list for that. So those are, those are income uh, limited folks that have you know, real needs. So whether it's a roof, as Councillor Som said, or a heating system, or they have an opportunity to connect to public utilities, um, these funds will help uh, get that done. It's a zero interest loan. And if they should refinance or otherwise convey the property, that's when uh, we would recover the funds and it just goes back in. It's just a, it's just a revolving account. So it would go back in there. So um, that's really it. I, I should have replaced the term backfill with infill on the sidewalks. I think that would have made it clearer. Um, there are just a couple pieces that are lacking from the end of the frontier communications parcel, um, which adjoins the Holdridge parcel on the north end uh, across in front of Holdridge's and then uh, across from Holdridge's as well, there are a couple sections that were never completed. So we have a, we have a good bit done. We have about 90% of it done in, in Ledger Center for sidewalks, but it would be nice to, to have it 100% so that you could go from the intersection of 214 and 117 all the way down to the Bill Library and down to the new Best Way and that section down by Best Way is actually part of the multi-use path. So that piece will be picked up in uh, our lot SIP uh, grant multi-use path as well. So that will be grant funded too. That's it. Very good, any questions? Oh, Bill, you have a comment? Yeah, I, I have a couple other ones. Um, I wanted to ask the mayor about light abatement at Nathan Lester House. That was on the list yes. originally. Yes, you're you're absolutely right, and and that that should go back on there. Okay. So uh, Nathan Lester led. Yep. Yep. That was thirty thousand. Thank you. Um, we also have an opportunity. There, there's an inter, original water system interconnection plan. This is for drinking water, not sewer systems. But the regional water interconnection plan uh, wants to connect our water systems, our main on Route Twelve. Uh, running up 12 over the Pocatana Cove Bridge to interconnect with Norwich Public Utilities. And if we could do that, we would have the opportunity to purchase water from either company. And in an emergency, um, you could move water from Groton uh, across the river, which you can do now, or up to Norwich and beyond. 
um, that project would cost 1.45 million and 50% of that would be paid for, if I recall, also with DECD grants or some, some, somehow half of that. So yeah, probably, that's- Yeah, probably EPH drinking water section. Yeah, so that's 50% of 1.45 million. Um, a really crazy idea, uh, which is probably not so crazy, but uh, we've had a discussion about when water systems get old and we pave a road and immediately start digging it up to repair, repair water line breaks, we should start thinking about rebuilding the Highlands water system. We have a fair number of leaks in that community. And at, it's, it's not outrageous, but it's, it, it won't get better. So we should be thinking about whether we want to replace the mains in the Highlands. Um, I think that was it. Any other counselors have comments? Uh, Councilor Ingalls. In the studies that have been done over the years, and this goes back, you know, probably 10, 15 years, I believe there was more than one study done on Gales Ferry and the Route 12 corridor. I'm thinking about sidewalk connectivity in the area of the Gales Ferry Library, the Job Lot Plaza, that whole that whole part of Gales Ferry. Has that been part of any of the development studies that we've had done? So th they did a Route 12 corridor study, I believe it was in 2008. And uh, that included uh, that included the former Gales Ferry School. I think it ran uh, probably ran as far as uh, the corner of Christie Hill Road and Route 12, back towards McDonald's, the intersection of Chapman Lane and Route 12, and into the village a bit. Um, if we, you know, that 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 study, and we have plenty of studies that we put on the shelf, but that one obviously is stale at this point. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure it would need to be updated. Uh, we we found an opportunity, a grant opportunity last year for about a $15,000 grant for that. However, uh, by the time we got to it, we we were we missed the deadline. There was no way we could get the planning department to get it submitted. But um, it wouldn't take a whole lot of money to um, update that that study probably a $15,000 number is a reasonable placeholder considering that's the number that we had just last year. Mm. So we could certainly add that to the list. Mayor, but also wasn't there a steep grant that went in like four or five years ago for that, for upgrades in there as well from ED that came through EDC that got yeah, denied we, through the state? Yes, we also, we also submitted a steep grant. We were trying to do, uh, we were trying to basically mirror what was done in Ledger Center. So we tried to, we applied for a half a million dollar steep grant uh, through the state and uh, we were rejected on that. And, and we're, we still want to, we still want to do that. So this year, if uh, steep grants are back in play, we do want to uh, put that back in, submit that again to the state, to see if we can start doing that. You know, the decorative street lighting, the sidewalks, the things that make the downtown uh, feel good to be there. Yeah. So you mentioned that the study is stale, uh, but a fresh study is required for grant submission. Is that correct? It is. It is. So we would have to have something, you know, the 2008 is, is definitely not going to cut it. Um, that was one of the reasons why we wanted to submit uh, a new study so that we could be 100% ready for the next round. So if we were to do that now, uh, we would be ready so that uh, if the state is going to announce a new round of steep grants, this year they were very lean. Uh, the steep grants were, were really minimal. I think ours was almost maxed out at $128,000. So uh, a far cry from the, the previous half a million dollar ones, but I understand. Sure, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Councillor Ingalls, it's interesting you mentioned that because my um, initial reaction when I saw this list was it is very heavily weighted to Ledger Center um, and nothing for Gales Ferry. Um, so it's something we all mm -hmm. obviously have to consider, um, mm -hmm. expect, you know, mostly the big ticket items for sure. So just, you know, again, we're open for suggestions. 
Um, I know Councilor Marshall had a question now. Uh, yeah, real quick. Uh, Bill, this is a great list. I'm actually excited about some of these projects. Uh, but I was wondering if the Board of Ed was eligible for any of this money. Great question, John. I, I had my hand up because I was going to say that the Board of Ed is also getting funding separately that they can use on infrastructure in the schools. So when I went through the capital plan, there's a lot of work we could be doing in our school buildings, but they have their own their own source of funds that, and they could use it on their buildings. The other thing uh, I should have mentioned is there are limitations on what we can use the funds for. We can't just spend it on anything, but water and sewer projects are high on the list. Um, and, and anything that has to do with uh, impact from the pandemic. Um, and lastly, I think I may have said this in the past, there is no application process. We have to get our, our plans together by December 2024, but we just spend the money. And we have to spend it by 26, but there's no process of saying, hey, we want to do this, can we? You just spend the money, which is really nice. And that's part of you know, making it happen more quickly rather than going through lots of hoops to find out that you got turned down. So great question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so Councillor Marshall, I believe the number the Board of Ed also received was something between 2.8 and 2.9 million dollars of their own ARPA funding. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. So we just need signed contracts by the end of 24. Is that correct? That is correct. And at some point, we'll certainly, I'm sure, in finance, um, have a discussion on process um, and how that's going to work. So any other questions or, or Ms. comments? Uh, Linda Scavin, I have one, one quick question. And the only one I have is on the uh, declare gov modules, Bill. Yeah. We say that that's a four-year increase for the 42000 what happens after four years? Yeah, that's a good question, Kevin, because we, we pay for ClearGov. It's, it's a cloud service. So we, we would be committing ourselves um, past, past this funding. So that, that would be an, an added expense once we consume these funds. Right. Good that's question. Right. Right. So and, that's, and that's, I think it's 10500 a year right. yeah, is the number. So you're right. On By year five, Assuming their pricing didn't go down and was the same or went up, we would need to be prepared to uh, pay for that again, or uh, we drop that off. You're right. We pay 10 years in advance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, will, I couldn't help myself. Um, yeah. Let's see. Any other discussion? That's good. That was a good discussion. I'm glad we had the opportunity to take that, um, to have this discussion. And without further questions or comments, uh, we have arrived at the end of our agenda. And I will ask Councillor Dombrowski to make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion, motion's been made and seconded. Um, this meeting is adjourned without exception. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.